Hey everyone, just took an extensive 1031 exchange course this week and I wanted to share a few of the highlights that I thought were going to be really helpful while they're still fresh in my mind. So first off, I'm not an expert in this area. If you're thinking of doing a 1031 exchange, be sure to consult an intermediary. Most offer free consulting and this is a great way to avoid, not evade, that would get you jail time, but avoid or really defer paying massive capital gains taxes. So, what I want to cover with you today are the top five things to know about 1031 exchanges. Number one, it's an exchange for a like-kind property. Leasehold interest for leasehold interest, mineral rights for mineral rights, has to be similar in nature. Number two, it has to be held for investment, not held for resale. So no builder flippers, uh, these cannot be considered inventory, can't be a primary resident residence. That would be covered under section 121. For an individual, you get uh, 250,000. For a couple, you could get 500,000. That would be tax exempt from capital gains. So the third thing is the napkin test. So the napkin test is supposedly written on the back of the napkin. So this states that the property you're buying needs to be of greater or equal value than what you've sold. If it's less, you'll just owe a difference on the tax. The second part of the napkin test is that the debt cannot can uh, must be replaced with cash or more debt. So you had a similar amount of debt, you can bring more debt if you're buying a more expensive property. So number four, and this is really important, is the timing and the identification period. So from the time you sell your property, you have 45 days to identify three possible replacement properties and 180 days to close on one of those properties. Now you can identify more than three, but then it gets really complicated. So let's say you identify four. Now the total of all four needs to stay below 200% in value of what you're selling. If it exceeds 200% or double, then you need to buy all four properties. So, and you also have to buy them at at least 95% of what you estimated their values to be. So pretty complicated. So remember, if you enter, enter into a 1030 on exchange, the money's gonna be tied up for a minimum of 45 days, maximum of 180 days. Okay, so number five is the same taxpayer rule. So it needs to be the same taxpayer on the sale property and on the purchase property. So a lot of stuff there, but this is get you started on them. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. If you need a recommendation for a good 1031 intermediary, feel free to reach out as well. Hope you have a wonderful day. Hope you see you in the mountains soon. Come out and enjoy some of this snow. Take care.